Hello, and you're very welcome to this week's edition of Leash County Matters. We've got a great show for you this week, so let's have a look at what's coming up. First tonight, we get in the picture with Port Leash Camera Club. Next, we brush up on our art knowledge at Mount Henry Art in Killinar. After the break, the sun shines on Castletown Tidy Town's summer fate. And finally, we celebrate the Mokra Awards. People of a certain generation will remember when you needed one of these to take photographs. Now, all you need is a smartphone. Which is better, film or digital? I'm meeting members of Port Leash Camera Club to find the answer to this and other photography questions. Terry, when was the club formed? We're on the go now at this stage, five, six years. We started in February 2011. And what were the aims of the club? The main aim is to um, kind of promote photography. We do compete, we do, um, we do a lot of things, but it's all photography based. It's all about learning and having a bit of fun while doing so. And what about the activities? What sort of activities do you take part in? Again, we try to mix it up. We try to keep people's interests going. So we try to push practical a lot. We come out to the Rock of Dunamace, we'd go off to Emo. We'd go to different places for practical. We'd also have nights where we'd have a session of processing, whether we're using Photoshop or anything else, we'd have a night like that. And then we get speakers in. So we'd, maybe once a month, we'd have a speaker in, a visiting speaker from one of the other clubs, maybe a professional photographer. We'd pick a certain part of photography, whether it be nature, landscape, portraiture, and somebody would come down, talk to us about theirs, and hopefully inspire a few of us. Now, in terms of film versus digital, is there a difference? Oh, God, yeah. I mean, film, uh, purely cost-wise, when you're shooting film, you had to be very, very precise what you were doing. You weren't going to print every photograph. You couldn't trial and error to see what mistakes were being made. With digital, on the other hand, you can shoot, you can trial and error, you can have a look immediately, you get instant feedback from the back of your camera. You can have a look at what we call the, um, the graph, the histogram in the back of the camera, see how the light is working out. So there's dramatic difference between uh, film and, and digital. And the output, therefore, obviously, is a lot higher, yeah. I suppose that time could, uh, taken to uh, get the final product is also much quicker, isn't it? No, no, not necessarily, because when you, in the past, when you took a photograph and you were doing it all in camera, a lot of the time you were spending it, sending it off to the likes of uh, Spectra, I think, were they, one of the big companies at the time, and they'd send it back and that was it. Nowadays, you take a photograph and, I mean, depending on what you're doing, you could be sitting for a whole weekend on that one photograph, uh, developing it, processing it, changing it, adding to it, taking away from it. So no, a lot more time involved. Are dark rooms out altogether? Yeah, yeah. Um, there are, I believe, two companies in in the country that you can send films off to nowadays. Um, by and large, it's it's uh, very specialist. I, I I don't know of anybody using a dark room at the moment. Jim, what is it about the club? Why are you a member? I just love the fact that when you go down to the club every week, you're there with like-minded people doing the same thing. You can ask a question. There's no question too simple, no question too difficult. If someone doesn't have the answer, they'll find out for you. And it's learning, they're learning all the time. Kevin, what's the importance of photography in local society? It's a record, it's a history. Um, I think the whole fact is we look back 30 years maybe and find out from old football games, soccer, local events that happened and we can see what our parents were doing. Now Eileen, what constitutes a good photograph? Well, Pat's here now and he's taken a landscape photo. So what we're looking at is depth of field, which means how much of the photo is actually sharp. So generally for landscape, you would have a large depth of field. So everything will be sharp from the first beginning of the photo to the end of the photo. And then we also have a rule what's called the rule of thirds, which is if you draw a grid like an X and O grid, our eyes are drawn to those intersections. So you will be aiming something of interest, you'll be trying to get it on one of those lines. So the horizon may be on one line, the fields may be, the tree line may be on another line. And that's what constitutes a good photo. Uh, so uh, both of those are the important factors. 
Yes, they are indeed. But I mean, photography is subjective. So what I might find appealing, Pat may not. So it's all in, you know, beauty's in the whole eye of the beholder. And what about colour mix? Colour mix, well, there are settings on it that have a white balance, which will, you can set it to say whether it's daylight or cloudy, the camera will do that for you. Or you can take control and decide what you want yourself. But again, you may prefer that landscape in black and white, as opposed to the lovely golds and greens and blues in the sky. And finally, Eileen, the lens you use might use uh, for this. Well, a lens for landscape, you would normally use a wide angle lens. And so that will give you a large picture. But you may zoom in so that you may focus on just one detail. So generally, you would use something maybe like a 10 to 24 for landscape. Well, this has been a very informative day out here on the Rock of Dunham Ace with the Port Leash Camera Club. I can't draw and I can't paint, but I do like nice pictures. We're here at Mount